guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel for the Sunday update on Hylion Holdings. We do this every week uh, without missing a beat. Uh, there's not a lot of positive news really that's going on right now with the grander volatility in the stock market. Uh, however, with an attempt to try to further discussion along, I'm going to do a cross comparison between Hylion and Nikola. I think there's some uh, other conversations going on in the landscape that uh, I'd like to weigh in on. Uh, offer my perspective on, uh, and uh, you should benefit from that as well. I would encourage each and every one of you guys to do your own homework. This has uh, uh, been nothing less than a very volatile sector uh, to see both of these companies really fall from their grace and uh, put us in a position that we are in now. I think a lot of it is based on the uh, current headwinds in the market, and it is, uh, it's rough. It, 2022 has been uh, one of the roughest markets that I can remember, uh, not necessarily from the speed of the downturn. Um, obviously, the pandemic retracement was much more volatile and compressed. This has been... Uh, very lingering. And my, my problem that I have is that I think some of those systemic issues that I look at as a stock market evaluator and a, a student of the economy are not really coming to the forefront as much as I would like them, them to be. Um, we're really focused on inflation right now, which um, I, I think we're at uh, peak inflation right now. The last couple of months would, uh, would provide us the data to suggest just that. Um, but I don't think that those are the looming concerns right now. Looming concerns right now for me, uh, an inflated real estate market market that for some reason got out of hand, um, partially contributed uh, to by the pandemic uh, and the re-rating and the mass exodus of certain locations in this country, uh, uh, artificially driving up uh, real estate prices, as well as the sub-market that's being created in real estate uh, right now, where if you are a single family home homeowner um, uh, customer, uh, you are at a disadvantage right now. And if you are not on the inside of said market, uh, you are an outsider looking in. Uh, and that will come to uh, much more of a, um, of a focus point in the next 10 to 20 years in real estate, um, where real estate brokers, hedge funds, real estate investors have a hand up and um, the middle class does not. So a lot of my message aims to advocate for those pockets of opportunity out there uh, for the retail investor. Make no mistake about that. That's who I'm advocating for. We run this commentary every single week to identify what I think is a fantastic transition going on in the EV space. Uh, I think there's some uh, conversations going on out there on the landscape that you can potentially benefit from, and I might add not to be influenced by. So I would highly encourage you to do your own research. A uh, plug and a shout out goes out to the Discord group, the Highly on Discord group. You can find that invitation. I try to leave a link in the bottom of all, all of my videos every single week because there's good discussion there to be had. But this is aimed to further, further the discussion on uh, the Nikola Hylian debate. I, quite frankly, don't understand why these two um, are uh, continually pitched against each other uh, when, in fact, their initiatives are, are um, they are justified in trying to seek a, a cleaner future uh, against a status quo that we have right now in an industry in shipping and logistics that's dominated by diesel. Furthermore, to lend new technology to a landscape that's going to need to integrate in some certain form or fashion these technologies to try to drive down their dependency on fossil fuels uh, only lends itself uh, appropriate that we take a few moments to look at this industry as a whole and understand what each of these companies are doing. Now, for full disclosure, uh, I have been patient on the Hylion opportunity. Uh, I've just added another thousand shares to my uh, growing uh, share base in Hylion. I bought a thousand share block. Uh, that brings my total share count up to 13,200 shares uh, with an obligation for another 4,000 or so shares uh, in way of uh, long call contracts. 
Um, now, for those people out there that would like to pit me against Nicola, uh, I'm not cheerleading one way or the other uh, for Nicola to fail. Uh, it is actually the contrary. And I actually own 10 long call contracts on Nicola as well. Uh, and that is because I think their technology does have a place in the drayage business, especially made specifically evident uh, by their involvement in the Port of Los Angeles, a place that I am intimately familiar with. And I think they will carve out their place in doing just that. Now, my bullish conviction on Hylion would speak to um, the size of those respective positions and where I think that the overall movement within the next five to 10 years are going to be extremely profitable. Um, I do, for the sake of conversation, want to have this cross comparison for the benefit of Hylion shareholders out there, because I do this with an emphasis and a focus on Hylion week over week. I don't typically like to focus on Nicola and what they're doing. I do study up on the company and the initiatives that they are uh, putting forward, and a lot of them upset me with uh, regard to their initiatives. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a cross comparison between my perspective on cross comparing these two when we are asking some of the critical questions. Okay. And the first thing I want to bring to your attention is what is Hylion looking to do? And on the front page of Hylion's website, um, uh, Turek Sultan, um, the head of Agility, spoke about highly on addressing one of the largest pain points in the industry. And that is finding a solution without having to completely replace their fleet. And I'll let you think about that for just a second. When we are talking about the objective and the vision and the initiative and what they're trying to, to do, Hylion is looking to collaborate with and augment an existing fleet. Nicola is looking to completely replace that fleet. Okay, now I just want you to sit back for just a second and think about what Nicola is asking to do. Now, if I had the ability as a company just to sit back and say, here we go, make it so. And we live in a world automatically where H2 is a dominant presence in the shipping and logistics industry. There was no salesmanship, um, there was no specs, there was no fuel availability issues. There was no power and torque issues. There was no driver issues. There was no payload issues. I can continue on and on and on. And you could just snap your fingers and make it so. At the end of the day, the granular vision and Nicola shareholders and uh, pundits of the company would agree that Nicola is looking to fully replace what they consider to be old technology. Okay. They're, they use words like heavy and clunky. Uh, I heard a word that was released just this week on a video. It was called beefiness, okay? You have to not look at Hylion as a viable solution because they have beefiness with their, uh, with their objective. You're right. Hylion is not looking to replace a, an industry that has been enjoying the shipping of our goods from point A to point B for the last 150 years. And let me give you another scenario to think about, my friends. What is it in way of pressure do these shipping and logistics companies, some of which are 100 plus years old, what real regulatory pressure do these companies have to fully replace their fleet? I'll wait. This is what gets missed all the time when Nikola is being looked at as the solution of the future. Now, the stock might suggest otherwise, uh, and these things will eventually get flushed out, may, mark my word, and it's something that I'm, I'm a little concerned about with my long calls, um, getting up to a place of an investment uh, that actually is somewhat respectable, because right now, Nikola shares are on a downturn. Uh, Hylion has already suffered their downturn, and Hyzon, I would like to keep that aside. They've got all kinds of mess with uh, potential for delisting and unable to provide any type of color around their European uh, revenues that they were able to garner, excuse me, uh, Chinese uh, revenues that they were able to garner. So we'll leave that alone. 
But when you're trying to form a consensus and you sit back and you look at these companies, you need to look at what it is, what it is their object, objective is. Nikola is a ground up OEM, okay? They are looking to go full force, put all your eggs in one basket. And that, that's what they're doing with H2. And they are looking for every one truck that they sell to the industry to be supplementing that um, logistics with the vision that those logistics eventually replace existing uh, trucks that are out there on the road with the H2 solution, okay? So look about the angle that they're looking to play. Um, if Nikola is able to succeed in their vision to completely replace a, a trucking and logistics space that is dominated now currently by diesel, wonderful. It only takes a snap of the finger, right, to do that. But as I'm going to discuss here, you're going to find that there are an extreme amount of barriers to entry. And you can't just sit across from an industry and say things like this, and I quote, it's not the fuel that you're putting in the truck. It's the truck the fuel is going into that makes the difference. Now, my friends, I had to write that down uh, from the individual who said it, and I did quote it uh, from this channel, that of which I'm not subscribed to anymore. I can't because this is where some of the terminology like old technology and beefiness and one is old and one is new is coming from. Okay. Uh, one truck is really heavy. Okay. We love our Peterbilt trucks, but I don't love it enough to suggest that we can't buy into this idea that it is time to completely, completely replace and scrap what it is that we've known in an industry for the last 10 decades. We need to scrap that. We need to completely replace it with the idea that C and G is dirty, okay? It's dirty. And H2 is clean. Therefore, we have to transition and we need to rush to start to replace this because if we don't do it now, we're going to be stuck in this scenario that we have right now. Now, I, I want to put this into context a little bit here, guys. The reason why I'm so bullish on this space and the EV is that the emissions profile of the shipping and logistics as a subsector of the industrial sector in the economy is bad, okay? Trucking and logistics, they contribute to more pollution than any other industry on the earth, bar none, and it's not even close. So if you're going to look at a space and look at improving that space, this space has a bullseye squarely on its back. But here's the thing, it cannot be looked at in a box, as if if we completely transition and go completely from diesel to let's just say hydrogen fuel, renewable natural gas, and dare I introduce the dirty and devilish fuel of CNG into the equation. But what is that going to contribute on a global stage when you have countries that dump their trash into the ocean directly. They dump it into the ocean directly. There are emissions standards that are non-existent in other countries, and they're polluting the atmosphere at will. Okay. Is it our job to completely replace our fuel with the technology or replace our fleets with a fuel that is going to somehow be responsible for saving the planet? Some would have you suggest that it is the only way forward in 100% total replacement, and therefore we can reverse this um, global warming effect that we've uh, single-handedly uh, put on the earth and are 100% responsible for fixing. You can believe that if you'd like, but at the end of the day, a company like Nikola has to sit across from an industry that is operating as we speak. It's, industry, it's operating right now. There's diesel being burned right now. There are over-the-road transport shipments being delivered right now by the predominant fuel 
of diesel. Okay. And the idea here is sitting across from industry and giving a sales pitch that reads as such. It's not the fuel that you're putting in the truck. Okay. So fuel doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, evidently. Okay. Evidently, by making this statement, it's the truck the fuel is going into that makes the difference. Okay. So if you don't look at my solution, as being the end all winner, then you are going with a less optimal uh, option. And that's the cell that Nicola is up against when they're sitting across industry to look at the Nicola tray, the, the fuel cell or the BEV option that Nicola has. This is your option right now to start to replace uh, 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 an industry or a suite or a fleet of trucks that are right now contributing to the demise of the earth. Okay. Shipping and logistics companies just magically snap their fingers and they make it happen. Why? Because nothing else matters. In this vision, okay, highly on to collaborate and augment with Nicola to completely replace, okay. In that scenario right there, the only real solution is to replace and to replace at all cost, at all cost. Doesn't matter about any of the attributes that the Nikola product can, can, uh, can bring to bear. Doesn't matter what type of proof and validation that they've went through. Doesn't matter how many years they have in testing this type of uh, pro protocol. They don't need to. See, all they feel like they need to do is just snap their fingers. And that was the reason for my Twitter this week in that they look at it like Nicola is somehow introducing to the fleet. Look, if Nicola wants to succeed in this business, they have to force their product onto industry and have them understand that there is no other choice out there than to start to replace and do so rapidly at the cost of everything else, okay? Remember, the end result here is to save the planet. It's not bottom line efficiency. It's not torque. It's not driver experience. It's not anything that we talk about. It's not aesthetics of the truck. It's not driving a lighter truck. It's not staying away from that old clunky uh, technology that we've learned to love and, and, and revolve around here with Peterbilt, International, Volvo, down the line, right, Kenworth? And so when we look at these two solutions, we have to sit back and we have to ask ourselves, what is the end goal? What is the end goal? And I would suggest through replacement that Nicola's sole mission is to burn H2, to burn H2, to reverse the signs of global warming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I lay on on the other hand, is looking to collaborate and augment, augment with old technology. And I, I find that somewhat of a sleight of hand to be deeming what has worked in the transportation and logistics. And I also would go so far as to declare that somewhat arrogant to somehow challenge an industry that by, by this person's admission actually was part of the industry which is somehow supposed to garner some level of credibility for this individual when they say, and trying to dif differentiate between these two visions of each of these companies as one being new and the other one being somewhat new, right? To, to old technology or an improvement upon old technology. But somehow that Nikola, because they are all new bolts and all new wire ties, that somehow we need to differentiate between these two opportunities as one being the cutting edge leading into innovators in H2 and the other being second best because they are old school. Okay. Mechanical theory, old school. Um, electrical engineering, old school, I guess. Um, efficiencies in fuel and aerodynamics, I guess, are, are old school. Um, 
driver uh, tendencies and 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 driver relationships. I guess those are old school, and we need to outthink all of those, um, all of the CDLs, all of the licensing, uh, all of the old certifications that these trucks have uh, achieved to have their licensing go out there on the road and deliver our freight in the way that we've become accustomed to is old. We need to rethink that and we need to replace every single bit of it, okay? The thinking heads would say, yep, you're right, Ryan. We do need to rethink and almost just think to completely replace all of what we have become accustomed to in the industry um, to, to completely reverse the changes or the um, um, global warming that we have um, identified within the last you know, 10, 15, 20 years, okay? The next thing I want to talk about here is the fuel objective. Hylion has taken much more of a fuel agnostic type of perspective into the future, and I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But I want to draw your attention to Nicola uh, putting all of their eggs into the H2 basket. What we know about science and technology is that it is ever evolving. The idea that we are going to evolve to a place where H2 is going to stand the time, a test of time over the next coming few decades, and, and dare I say, the next century, is somewhat arrogant. It really is. <clears throat> because it has not been put into the same level of rigor. We know what diesel can do. We know about its durability. We know about its efficiency, uh, which it is. Uh, and we know about its uh, potential or its harm to the environment. What, what we don't understand is what H2 is going to be delivered uh, in way of uh, a holistic uh, approach. And that is putting the trucks on the road and seeing how they survive over the course of a seven to 10 year uh, life of that unit or rig. Okay, that's what we don't know. Now, let's just assume for a moment that it performs magically. Okay. And the Nikola thinking tanks would have you believe that it is indeed the solution for the future. Um, it is solution proof. It is absolutely the way of the future. Um, costs are going to come down to where they are uh, negligible uh, in the eyes of um, uh, continuing to fuel the fleet with diesel. And it is the wave of the future. Aren't we somewhat looking at this in a, 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 um, a very shallow light in that if we put all of our hope and all of our trust with everything that we know right now in H2, if we put all of that into that H2 camp right now, aren't we somehow moving away from optionality for our fleets and aren't we perhaps making the same mistake that we made with diesel a hundred years ago when we introduced diesel as the uh, fuel of choice, could we have been able to foresee that a hundred years later, we would be frantically looking to develop a technology that moved us away from a diesel dominated past? Would there have been any way a hundred years ago to foresee that we would be in that place now when we are looking to move away from what we have enjoyed and what they identified as uh, at the time as being revolutionary. How is it that we have the ability to right now speculate on H2 being the sole dominant source of fuel in the future? I would suggest that we don't. And the Nicola camp would have you believe that H2 is the end all solution of the future. Thomas Healy seems to believe that. Mm -hmm. Paul with H2's channel seems to believe this. He's changed the name of his YouTube channel and went all in on this. Um, my friends, I don't believe that the discussion is, um, is really that important. <laughs> I don't. I think there are fuel sources right now being um, utilized and there are massive amounts of money going toward the efficiencies on many types of fuels all right 
um, methanol, um, LNG, CNG, renewables, hydrogen, solar, wind even. Um, ammonia is in the discussion as well as some of the discussions about how we could potentially transition in the short term to take what we have right now, even with our traditional fossil fuels and just make them more efficient. And the Nicola camp would say, oh, whoa, 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 Ryan, we need to completely replace those. They're evil. They're evil. As a matter of fact, Ryan, you're going to go to a neon green hell by suggesting that we continue to burn diesel. I am suggesting that. Um, and that's why my conviction is so heavy with Hylion is to meet somewhere in the middle and where that middle ground is, is going to, um, it's going to involve a future where a more agnostic future is probably more in the cards than an all devoted H2 future. And here's why. Remember how I talked about Hylion and Nicola sitting across from the same industry and, and selling them on their idea and, and convincing them that their way is the way of the future. If I can convey this very point to you guys, you'll really understand why in fact I come with this idea and defend the old technology and the dirty technology and the heavy technology as much as I do. But when we're talking about sitting from industry and we're looking at route A to B, a to B. We randomly select that route A to B off of the map. Let's just say it's here in North America, somewhere, Canada and US. We randomly select it. Let's just say that it's a thousand mile route. Okay. I don't know what the common mean is for routes in this country. I don't know what percentage of the routes are made up by short, medium or long haul. I don't know. Hylion has discussed going after the long haul market and Nicola has pledged their devotion to transitioning the long haul market as well. So in all fairness, I'm not going to pick a route that's 200 miles, maybe a thousand miles. We're going to put all these thousand mile routes into a bucket. Okay. And we're randomly going to select one of those routes. And we say, boom, here it is right on. We've got from Florida to Albuquerque. I don't know if that's a thousand miles. I don't know. I don't really care. But for the sake of discussion, remember, you're holding this route A to B in your hand, and you're sitting across from industry, and you're saying, which of these two companies have the best chance of providing a solution that will allow the transport of goods to be maintained in a way that they have enjoyed over the course of running that route since the inception of running that route? Okay. And when you think about that scenario, the Nicola camp will come back to you and say, well, if we can't run the route with H2, then we're not running the route. And what is industry going to say? Hylion's going to come, or Nicola's going to come right over the top and say, it's not the fuel that you're putting in the truck. It's the truck, the fuel it's going into that makes all the difference. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case in this scenario. Now, does it, Nicola? If you don't have fuel along the route. Now, this was random. And the Nicola people, man, they would have you, uh, they would have you believe that there's fueling all over the place. And that, I mean, this is why I can't watch this other channel because the discussions are so misleading in that somehow H2 availability and CNG availability are in the same camp. No. No, they're not. They're completely different. Okay. C and G has massive availability in this country and H2 does not. That, that's a fact. And to somehow muddle the conversation to suggest that that C and G H2 route has just as much of an opportunity to be drawn from the bucket of AB routes that I discussed is false and it is misleading. And it is very, very much aimed at driving a narrative, driving a narrative. I, I would have loved for the AB route to be selected. And we scrutinize that route based on just fuel alone, fuel alone, to have a number of H2 fueling stations along that route so we could at least engage in the discussion. But you failed on point number one. This was a random selection of the route. 
Now Hylion gets to sit across from that same individual and say, well, we've got three or four routes. We've got some real availability here to skip this one. And because of our thousand mile range, we can end up hauling to this one fuel here and end up actually successfully providing you a solution aimed at solving the major pain point in industry right now and that is augmenting the existing fleet, not replacing it, okay? Now, again, if, if H2, if Nikola could just magically drive that route on air, on air, and successfully run that route, we would still have all kinds of stuff to discuss about them actually getting to that bottom line that I've just so elegantly uh, demonstrated that in the first criteria and many others, Hylion successfully negotiates that random route drawn, and Nicola does not. You don't think that that scenario plays out over and over and over again within industry. You don't think that that scenario plays out multiple times over when discussing the fleet. It seems like Nicola's kind of pulled chocks and they've went to Europe because the fuel availability or the H2 availability in Europe is, is much higher. And I would suggest that if they had the ability to draw a random route out of that sitting with industry, not knowing what it is their traditional routes are, that they would have more of a chance to say, yes, we can successfully negotiate that route when it comes down to fuel availability. I'm not talking about payload. I'm not talking about drivers. I'm not talking about reliability. I'm not promising the truck doesn't break down because there's a lot of uphills and not downhills on the route, okay? I'm not suggesting any of that. But from a fuel availability perspective, we at least have that covered, okay? We can at least put fuel into our vehicle to make sure that it propels and provides momentum down the road to the freight that we're looking to haul, okay? When we're talking about maintenance um, and we're talking about Hylion and Nickel, I'll briefly mention this. Hylion has more of a modular type of approach, but if there's a problem with a Peterbilt bumper um, and they need to go to an authorized repair facility, they can do that. The Nicola folks, I, I got into a huge heated argument about six months ago about this on Twitter, which I typically do, um, because I just think that they're not really, I, I don't know if the Nicola folks truly enjoy being in this fairy tale land of, of, of understanding everything about the diesel industry or the trucking industry as a whole. I'm one to tell you that I do not, okay? But I have enough truckers in my fleet that weigh in on one side or the other. And I can tell you the vast majority of them are like, this Nikola thing is a complete dream, okay? It's a dream. These high ups in the company for their own pocketbooks wanna see the company succeed. And I fail to acknowledge how much acknowledgement they have received in reciprocation on behalf of the truckers that they are looking to serve. Hylion has been accused of knowing more about the trucks than the trucking fleets themselves. They've been accused of this. That's a good accusation, my friends, if you're looking to augment an existing uh, industry rather than come in and say, you're done, we're going to shit can you and we're going to replace you with our product. How do you think people respond to that? How do you think people will react to that? Oh, really? Really? You don't think that we're going to be a little more scrutinizing on your product as opposed to perhaps maybe constructively critical on this other company over here that's looking to actually augment our operation and, and see where it is that we need help? Where are the pain points in industry and looking to soften up those pain points? Right, That's the key. Nicola is looking to replace this entire idea of uh, our mechanics. Our, our mechanics are going to be done. Um, because the new technology is going to call for a more advanced level of expertise to service the trucks, whereas Hylion is looking at more of a modular maintenance program where when the battery needs um, renewal or replacement, they pull the battery bank, send it back to Hylion, send it back out, the, out to the truck, and it's good to go. Okay, this should be a very, very simple uh, procedure where they do this. It's done. There shouldn't be a whole lot of um, on-road mechanic type of um, uh, necessity uh, when we're looking at the idea of how they're going to maintain these trucks on the road, okay? 
Next is fuel ab availability. We talked about it through the AB scenario, but in its granular sense, fuel availability is a yes for Hylion. Nicola, oh my goodness, H2 availability, my friends, has to be a no. And it's amazing to me how I watch these cross comparisons and they just lie about this very thing, okay? Now, the idea is that at some point down the line, infrastructure will be built and it's being built right now. I concur. What does that mean? Does that mean that fuel's available? No, it doesn't. You need to get your facts straight, okay? Is fuel availability? No, it's available. No, it's not. And if it was availability, we have to discuss the cost. Oh, Ryan, you're just not seeing the big picture. You're not seeing the big picture and this drive and vision toward H2 into the future that somehow H2 is going to dominate all and cost of said fuel is not going to play into the discussion. <laughs> sure. The design. This is one thing that I discussed and I've heard through some social media circles that somehow the design is somehow a, a, a negative or a delta for Hylion. <laughs> really? Ask the truckers, okay? Put a picture on the, on, the, on the board, take a consensus of 100 drivers, put a picture on the wall of the Nikola Trey Bev or the Nikola fuel cell truck uh, and a Peterbilt and see which ones they choose. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I have no idea. Okay. But this is, this is where you're put at a decision point to somehow suggest that because the Peterbilt is old technology, um, that of which drivers have begun a, uh, become accustomed to for many, many decades, that somehow for the good of the order and the good of the planet and the green initiative and to support everything that's going on right now, we're going to flush the country into the toilet right now, but at least we're going to save the planet. OK, by transitioning this fleet over here that we've earmarked as being the only problem in this country, in this world, this is the only problem. And we're looking at this over here. It, with all of that said, I'm going to choose the Nikola truck because it just looks incredibly awesome and it just looks incredibly badass when it's put on a picture on a wall and those drivers are asked to choose. Which one would you choose out of those hundred? I don't know. Does it change if you beef it up to a thousand drivers? 10,000 drivers, which one do they choose? Which one do they choose? And which one do they choose based on the one topic of design? Is this something that the industry is asked to change? I don't know. I'm just a small commentator on social media. Is this something that the industry has stood up and say, yep, we're good. We throw in the towel. We don't need to have this Peterbilt design anymore. Cancel all orders for 2023 and 24. We're out. We need to go with this Nikola product because evidently it's lighter and oh it uses new bolts this peterbilt it, it uses old bolts uh, and oh by the way the racking uh, uh, spe uh, 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 specifics and the engineering specs that it was run under that doesn't mean anything either because it's old steel nickel is new steel it's new steel or new aluminum or whatever the chassis is i don't know what the chassis material is i don't know it doesn't matter it's new so therefore you have to get it okay you have to get rid of the old and you have to move into the new. Get rid of the old and into the new. And what are we talking about here? By taking the new initiative, somehow Nikola is going to find favor in the stock market because make no mistake about it, I don't really like this going back and forth between these two companies anyway. The bottom line is dollars. If Nikola makes it, Hylion ceases to exist. Okay. If Hylion makes it, Nikola ceases to exist. Okay. That's stock market investing, okay? But as far as the discussion goes, there couldn't be a more staunch difference between these two companies, Nikola and Hylion, and that's why we're looking to further discussion on it. But when we're talking about design, one is to keep the design and one is to replace the design. And it's amazing to me how the Nikola camp will suggest that somehow that's a positive for the company. I beg to differ. I beg to differ because in the granular sense, it just does not meet muster. Sorry, it doesn't meet muster. If the truck driving community can correct me on that and say, you betcha, I'll fall all over myself to compete for that new Nikola fuel cell vehicle and, 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 and get rid of my Peterbilt, then no problem. I'll eat crow on that, but I'm pretty certain I'm right. Okay. The range. The range of the Hypertruck ERX is comparable to diesel. You guys don't know how incredible that is of a statement, okay? 
Um, the range on the Nicola, I have no idea. I have no idea. There's people who watch me so they can bash me and understand that their Nicola product is so much better. How? How is it so much better? There's concept over the road right now being put to the rigor on Hylion. And we're probably at anywhere between an 800 mile range that they can meet with ease. And as much as 1200 miles of range, it's not going to matter. It's going to cover that full day of driving. Nikola cannot achieve that full day of driving. And the Nikola camp, I heard from, again, my, my favorite channel out there, who's interesting, very interested in talking about Hylion and Nikola at length um, and, 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 and using the search tag of Hylion to provide and supplement that four or 500 extra views to his videos. But to, to, to somehow suggest that the range of the, of the Nikola fuel cell truck doesn't matter because you can just pull over and, and fuel up uh, multiple times in the day to meet the same level of efficiency is absolutely idiotic. And it, it pains me to have to explain this to somebody as smart as this individual is perceived and self-confessed to be, um, that multiple fuelings in the same day, mind you, two is, is somehow the same as one is idiotic. It's idiotic. Okay. That is assuming that in a perfect world, right, this yellow brick road world, the world of Oz, where we exist, and that's where every single corner of every single truck stop and every single location in this country actually has H2 availability, just waiting for the Nikola truck to fly into, uh, get its fuel within 38 seconds, and then continue hauling freight down the road. That's just not reality. Okay, so the ability to chop up routes and say, yeah, we could do three or 400 miles here, fuel with H2, and then continue on another two or 300 miles and finish that route successfully to incur two fuelings, it would be that scenario that I would yield and say, yeah, all right, you could actually do that. But with the unavailability of fuel, it's a futile argument to be had. And it's okay. All they got to do is just pull over four times during their route. It's okay. Now, let me be fair. Uh, I don't like to do that sleight of hand. Let me just be fair and suggest that if it takes two fuelings per route, if the fueling is not a, a, a existent in the first place, then why are we even having this discussion? And I think people are becoming privy to this. And I think the reality is setting in. And I tell you what, it's going to be a staunch reality for these people who are somehow advocating that the new bolt in the Nikola uh, uh, fuel cell vehicle makes all the difference in the decision-making process, as opposed to somehow the bolts and the old technology oh, and the electricity that flows through their system is somehow different than the electricity that flows through mine. <laughs> it's laughable. It's laughable. The, uh, the, the sheer deliberation that is going on is set with a bottom line objective. And those objectives I talked about on the top end of the, uh, on the weekly address here, when we're talking about either replacing or augmenting an existing uh, fleet out there. Okay. When we talk about fuel cost, this is another driver that I've touched upon, all right? And it needs to come into your uh, decision-making metrics. And this is something when I challenge the Nikola community, they lose their freaking pants. And I actually was told this week that I'm going to be sued for false information. What I did was I said that Nikola forced the Nikola opportunity on the industry. That's what they're doing. Okay. That's what they're doing. They're saying, we're building a product and we're going to tell you to replace your fleet. That is what they're doing. There's nothing untrue about that. And the Nikola people don't like that at all. They don't like when I say things like that. But what I said was, answer the question, what is fuel going to cost? How much does it tow? What type of torque does it have? And what type of efficiencies does it have? I don't know the answer to any of these. So when I was doing the cross comparison here, and the Nikola camp is funny, man, they're going to say, well, it's H2, therefore it's more efficient. Really? Prove it. Prove it. Show that there's long durability there show that that efficiency can be maintained over the course of running the rigor of that unit over the course of many, many years. You can't do that. 
Okay, so you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, we're running H2, therefore uh, we're provided a, a halo of amnesty over this entire topic. No, no, it doesn't work that way, especially when you're talking to somebody like me who has a viper tongue. Okay, when we're talking about uh, fuel cost, it depends with Hylion on what fuel you're choosing. Okay, and let's just be fair. The renewable natural gas opportunity with the Hypertruck ERX is going to... It's going to unlock the portfolio of value with answering this question for those companies out there that want to run CNG RNG. CNG RNG is old, Ryan. It's old. Fracking is bad, Ryan. It's bad for the environment. We need to do away with fracking and that'll save the environment. It'll stop all these hurricanes. I truly believe that, right? We need to stop it all. Please. Just stay focused on the fact that what we are looking at here is looking at an alternative to solution to diesel. That's what we are looking at. And it's going to unlock the portfolio of value and sitting down with industry and sitting across from them and looking dead in their eye and say, we can offer this product. What are your routes that can be accommodated by CNG and renewable natural gas? Well, we've taken all of our AB routes and we put them into this bucket and here they are. You answer that question for us. You randomly draw one of the routes out. Let's just draw five. Let's take a little handful of those five routes. We're going to lay them in front of us, okay? And we're going to say, now that the Hypertruck ERX with renewable natural gas and or CNG, CNG being less of an environmentally uh, a contributor, right? But it is in the fold as being an option for our fuel away from diesel. Okay, CNG and the fuel availability that exists therein. We lay the routes in front of us, boom, boom, boom. How many of those routes can now be made possible by this product that we have, the Hypertruck ERX? We're talking up to new fleets, we're talking to existing fleets. Talking to Rwan, it's easy because we have a retainer of 10 Hypertrucks already, all right? Now we look at those 10 Hypertrucks and we look at these five routes. Let's just say we grab another handful of routes. And we put those routes on the table and we have 10 AB routes, 10 AB, 10 AB, 10 AB. We have 10 order backed uh, hypertruck ERXs and we're gonna place those 10 hypertrucks on these 10 random routes. Now, mind you, they don't have to be random, okay? I'm just doing this for example's sake to understand how badass the Hylion solution is. Take the 10 hypertruck ERX backs by deposits, put them against these 10 random routes that we have pulled out of this, let's say Rwan or any of the other shipping and logistics uh, businesses out there and say, how is it that these 10, how, how effective are these 10 solutions going to be in running these 10 routes with the fuel of choice, RNG, uh, CNG? That's really the bottom line of what we're talking about. If you took 10 routes and you put them on the table and you put the same scenario against Nikola, how successful are they in sitting across the industry and actually saying we can successfully negotiate these 10 random routes? I would suggest that even if Nikola could sit down and cherry pick the routes, they're going to cherry pick the routes. How successfully would they be in looking at those routes and saying, I'm sorry, industry, we cannot accommodate based on fuel accommodation and in what we're talking about, fuel cost, okay? Now go back to the scenario where we have the 10 hyper trucks with the 10 routes on the table and we're looking at fuel optionality and we're looking at cost along that route. And you can say, hold on a second, we've got a dollar of looming credit for either a mix of CNG uh, and or a blend of renewable natural gas. Remember, it doesn't matter if you're a producer or a user, you both get the dollar of fuel credit. Oh, hey, that's, that's incredible, right on. So we can look at this route uh, on here and we can leverage the prospects and draw scenarios or hypothesis based on running renewable natural gas or CNG along that perspective route. We compare that against our baseline, which is diesel, which is a, a cost of X, the cost of Y over here of running that same route with CNG, RNG, and here's the bottom line savings. This is the very deliberation that's going on right now with scrutinizing routes. And we're talking about fuel cost 
I put depends under Hylion. It depends. Well, I don't know. It seems that this is a very hilly route. The Hypertruck might not even work for you. The Hybrid EX might be a better product for you to just continue to run diesel. Ryan, you can't say that. You can't say that they can continue to run diesel. You're, you're a sacrilege, man. You're, 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 you're a freaking evil person. You're an evil person. All right, I'm evil. But what from the government or state mandates would suggest that that company can't maintain the status quo when it comes to diesel on that hilly route? And the Hypertruck ERX might not be the best solution on that hilly route. Oh, well, the Nikola uh, hydrogen fuel cell is the best on that route. Really? with its lack of torque and lack of efficiency and lack of horsepower and lack of lack of lack of lack of this? Really? That's the best solution? Hm, no kidding. Perhaps maybe just augmenting and using a bolt-on old solution to an old truck might be the best solution in that particular route. Why? Because we've figured out something that the Nikola Camp has not figured out and that is providing optionality to the customers that they serve. And that is why I tweeted what I tweeted when I used the word forced, forced. And I got accused this week of uh, pro potentially being sued for uh, sharing false information. It's not false when I put it in that light, am I? Okay, because they're not providing optionality, my friends. Okay, Hylion is providing optionality. They are looking to go back to the top end benefit to this, uh, these two solutions, augment versus replace, augment versus replace. And then Nicola Camp would uh, try to downplay the idea of augmenting the fleet as if it's old, as if it's beefiness. It's got beefiness, all right? The trucks are huge. <laughs> the, the trucks are huge. Truckers are going to come around, man. They're all going to choose the picture on the wall of that uh, beautiful Nikola fuel cell vehicle because it's so badass looking. Aesthetics don't matter, Ryan. Huh. Uh, aesthetics don't matter, okay? H2 on paper is the superior solution, okay? Therefore, truck drivers, when they're asked to select based on an aesthetics and design, are going to opt for that Nikola fuel cell vehicle every time, Ryan, you know, they are, you know, they are, you know, that they're going to go with that because it's better for the companies that they serve. <laughs> it might detract from their actual driving experience, but it's going to be better for the man, right? The one who actually signs their paycheck. So therefore they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. And they're going to opt for this, uh, for this uh, better solution over here with H2. No, no, I'm not buying it, my friends, and I don't think you are either. When it comes to environmental benefit, it really just depends on what Hylion is going to look to introduce for the fleet as we move away from diesel. Is moving to CNG a better option than diesel? Okay, the Nikola camp would say absolutely, absolutely not. It's like a cuss word. It's like saying the F word, stop doing it. If you keep saying it, you're going to go to hell. All right. Stop saying it. Okay. Renewable natural gas. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. It's, it's okay. It's okay. But H2, H2, um, we're going to start building churches, okay, across this country. And we're going to put H2 on the top of it. People are going to come and they're going to worship uh, at, the house, at the house of H2 because H2, remember, is our end all be all solution to um, the uh, global warming effect that we've identified as of late. Okay, it's the end all be all. And we need to start going in and we need to start worshiping H2 as being that end all be all solution. It doesn't matter that China dumps all their trash into their seas and it ends up into the ocean. That has nothing to do with anything. Okay, we need to remain focused here. We need to keep the discussion in such a way that supports my narrative. All right. So when you start to get distracted over there and talk about other sources of pollution, you can't do that, man. You got to stay narrow minded. All right. You got to think about it this way. If we can just introduce H2 at 100% clip in the shipping logistics, we'll be good to go and global warming will cease to exist. We'll fix it. We'll fix it right now. All right. Environmental. I, I do think I yield to the potential benefits of H2, obviously. It just makes sense conceptually and scientifically. Um, I do say with the same light that it is not a good source of energy, okay? It's dangerous to transport. I have friends that are physics teachers. I have sources as well 
that tell me, and I'm not sure who was telling all of these peoples that H2 is the magic solution of the future. Thomas Healy knows this. And I've said this before, and I totally believe this to be true. I'm being presumptuous with this, but I absolutely believe that Thomas Healy is actually leading Nicola like a dog and pony down this H2 uh, uh, rabbit hole, and then is going to drop the leash. He dropped the leash in the rabbit hole, and Nicola is going to have a choice, either find their way out of the rabbit hole or just open the tiny door to, uh, to Wonderland, okay? And... I, I think he's doing this on purpose because I actually believe that he truly does believe the hurdles that need to be overcome to seek out this optimal choice. Now, by, by seeking the optimal choice, it does not mean that a transitional fuel can't be the answer in the short term or medium term. And try to define medium term, my friends, what is that going to mean? 10, 20, 30, 50 years? I don't know. I don't know. But is it going to happen next year for hydrogen? No. Is it going to happen five years down the line? No. The further I go, the more Nicola Camp will be like, it's happening right now, Ryan. It's happening. No, it's not. It's not. Get out of my face with that. It's, it's not. Because as these companies start to adopt H2, either one of two things are going to happen. It's going to work or it's not going to work. Okay. For the ideas that I'm suggesting that H2 is not a good energy source. It's not. We have enjoyed fossil fuels for the last hundred years and beyond for many, many reasons is because it's a badass fuel source, badass fuel source, but global warming, Ryan, we have to save the planet by doing away from all of what we've grown accustomed to in burning fossil fuels to understand and cook our food. I've got LNG right now piped into my freaking kitchen. Oh no, but that's bad. You need to throw your, you need to throw the oven out the window off the balcony and, and you need to replace it with a hydrogen oven because hydrogen is going to be that contributor to uh, fixing global warming. Just, just please, just please try to find your way out of the rabbit hole and try to see it my way. Okay. Just for once, just for once, then you can go back to the church of H2 and continue following along in that cult following that somehow we're going to save the future by adhering to this fuel. Is it important? Yes. Is it the end all of all discussion? Well, if you start there, all other arguments are futile. Bolts are old. Chassis are old. Peterbilt's old. Drivers are old. Drivers don't know what they're talking about. One is old. One is new. Uh, one is bad. One is good. It, 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 it fits all of the narrative. If you're adhering to this principle that H2 is the end-all, be-all solution into the future, and I just, I think there's a grander perspective to this. I do. Is hydrogen going to be around in the future? Yeah, I do. But I say that with some level of neutrality, not totality. Is it going to be around in the future? Yeah. To what percentage? I don't know. The Nicola camp would have you suggest that it's going to flip flop and go from 99% diesel to 99% H2. Oh, no, Ryan, don't don't say that. That's not right. That's not true. We're not saying that at all. Okay, then pick a percentage. Is it going to be 50? Oh, I don't know, Ryan, that seems pretty aggressive too. I, God dang, Ryan, you, you're being kind of crazy now. Yeah, it's because I put your mind to a decision and I do not give you the idea and the, the, the comfort of resting on your laurels and resting on things that just are not true in reality, okay? 25%? Yeah, I don't know, I'm sure. 25%, Ryan. 25% of the industry is gonna be dominated by H2. You really think that's gonna happen within 10 years? I'll put you to a decision, okay? If you feel like your bullish conviction is such to put one single dollar on the H2 revolution the way that I have, you could suggest that an over-under is probably in order whether or not the H2 industry 10 years from now is going to be uh, accommodated by 25% of, of hydrogen fuel, okay? Um, I'm an under on that, and I'm still an investor in the space, okay? But let's be very, very fair about this. Where are we going to be in the future with regard to our H2 penetration in the fleet? 25? 50? Oh, Ryan. 100%? Oh, Ryan, you're just being unfair. Okay, I'm being unfair. I understand. Okay. My mind is severely immersed in reality. And if it's 100%, I would actually yield and say that that's a possibility in nature. Although, albeit a very, very rare possibility, I will yield to the Nicola camp and suggest that it is a uh, far distant and uh, um, uh, possibility, uh, albeit a possibility if we just decided to go ahead and replace our fleet now 
put all trucks to the side right now, government mandate and says, uh, by the end of 2023, all trucks have to be run on H2. And if you run uh, diesel, you'll be arrested and thrown in jail for the rest of your life. Okay, that's a possibility, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in a society that I don't want to be part of, uh, I won't be in this country anymore. And the independent investor channel will cease to exist because I'll be sitting on an island somewhere not in this country. Okay. All right. Lastly, we'll talk about the business model. The business model of Hylion is lean. Ah, it's old. You're augmenting old crap. It's just crap. It's crap. They take old crap and they paint it up to make it look good. This was actually said, guys. This was actually said. And it is my opportunity to defend those people out there with a whim of common sense and uh, rational, deductive reasoning when you're looking at this situation to combat those things that are said. And I would never say that. I would never say oh, Nikola is a bad product because of the paint color that they have chosen. I would never say that Nikola is a bad company because of the, the type of name that they've chosen for the company. That's been suggested. Hylion is a bad name for the company. Therefore, it's not going to succeed. Okay. All right. Yep. They paint on uh, a bunch of old crap onto a bunch of existing trucks, and that's what they call a solution. And, and, and Nikola is better because of that. I don't, I don't agree. Business model is lean. Okay. We're looking to augment the truck where necessary and looking to leave those uh, areas of the truck that don't need to be improved upon alone. Nikola is looking to take on an intensive uh, business model, a capital intensive business model by starting from the ground up. The Nikola camp would suggest that that's the way to go. Uh, and the proponents of uh, Hylion would say that, that the uh, lean business model is the way to go. I don't know. I'll leave that for you to disguise discussion because we need to start wrapping it down. I could sit here and talk all day about Hylion. We've been going already for about an hour. Okay. I want you to think about a couple of things in summary of what we talked about today, the routes. I tried to draw a distinction and nobody else talks like this, this man, when we talk about Hylion. Um, I've been critical of Helion, which is a Hylion uh, uh, YouTube channel that just comes on and regurgitates information that's already been released by Hylion. I don't benefit from that, okay? You guys seem to benefit from it. You guys seem to go on there and wow, that was a great video. Yeah, it was great the first time I watched it. We don't need to have basically biting uh, uh, content that's released by Hylion and released for the good of somebody's individual initiative to grow a YouTube channel. Okay. I run the independent investor channel, the independent investor channel, albeit is consumed once a week by Hylion. It is not the end all be all of my channel. It never will be. It never has. And it will be in the near future here as we look to share this opportunity um, with the opportunity where it lies right now. But I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But it, in summary, I want you guys to think about some of the things that I've articulated in this video, and that is routes. Grabbing the 10 routes arbitrarily out of the bucket for a, 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 a would-be prospective client, whether or not it be a Hypertruck ERX council member or a new client sitting across from them and saying, yes, we can match all of those routes. And in those two scenarios, cross comparing these two companies, which one is more able to accommodate the needs of the customers? Nicola would say, we don't care. We don't care. It's global warming. You suck, Ryan. You're going to hell. Our solution is the end all be all. It doesn't matter if we can't handle those 10 routes. It's, it's okay. It's all right. We just come up with funny little things like it's the fuel that you're putting in the truck. It's the truck that the fuel is going into that makes all the difference. And if we just say that over and over again to the industry, they're going to say, wow, that sounds really interesting. It's really confusing. I, I really don't have any idea, but it sounds really great. Let's put in an order of 150 Nikola trucks uh, because this, this person seems to understand what they're talking about. Um, we can go ahead and do that. Cross compare the ability to successfully negotiate the routes that are being driven right now under the rigor of diesel service and who best is uh, prepared to augment those routes rather than replace them, okay? Who along the lines of either hyper uh, truck ERX or the Nikola uh, hydrogen fuel cell truck has the ability to provide fuel optionality? 
okay? Is it better to go all in on H2 or is it better to provide fuel optionality? And I come back to that example of the 10 routes pulled from the bucket, placed on the table at random and taking a look at what, what is available along that route. Is RNG available? Ding, ding, ding. Is CNG available? Ding, ding, ding. Is diesel available? Ding, ding, ding. Is ammonia available? Ding, ding, ding. Is H2 available? That, that, that's it. I, I can't, I can't do anything else. Okay. I can't, I can't make, give you any other examples. And it just comes to this idea that perhaps maybe the whole fuel argument um, is probably not the end all of the argument, nor, nor is the truck that the uh, item goes into for the examples that I've uh, disclosed to you today, because it has a fresh paint job. Mm -hmm because it has Hylion written on it, uh, because it's got beefiness, beefiness. I, I don't know. Um, that was an adjective. It was thrown out there, and I, I'm not even sure if that is a word, but it was made up. It, it, it draw, certainly draws into the narrative of understanding the distinction between these two companies. And in closing, I just want to suggest that the greater volatility in the stock market right now is probably lending to um, a lot of the downturn and a lot of these names, many micro caps, many made, everything's rolling off right now. Uh, nothing is amused, immune to the volatility. But, we, but when you look to draw a distinction between these two companies, I have drawn mine. Um, hopefully this helps you understand mine, not necessarily to encourage yours. And this is where the deliberation happens. Uh, they have just as much passion as, as me on my conviction about Hylion than they, the Nikola camp, have on the Nikola opportunity. Um, and it doesn't mean that any one of us are right or wrong. Uh, we get a little bit impassioned about trying to draw a distinction between these two companies, what is important and what is not, uh, what is being focused in on, and whether or not those focuses warrant our attention at the current juncture. Um, and we will continue to further on this discussion to try to drive the conversation forward in monitoring these two companies and seeing how the opportunities unfold into the future as we are looking to really realize the optimal objective of each of these companies, and that is to drive down greenhouse gas emissions and drive to a cleaner future. And I believe both of these companies are in line with doing that with what I would consider to be very, very different top line objectives. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to the weekly highly on video. Appreciate your subscribership. If you do like the content, I would encourage you to join the community here of empowered individual investors. We trust nobody except ourselves. It's just that it's just that simple. Um, we, we are not to be influenced by anybody else other than our own initiatives and what we do in deliberating around the decisions that we make with regard to our own investment thesis, portfolio, and direction going forward. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the video without the, with anybody that's interested in the Hylion story. I'd encourage you to uh, enjoy the discard group. If you're not already in there, join it. Kick over to Hylion.com for any amplifying information that you think that I've missed. Please do so. Guys, I appreciate you joining me for the totality of this weekly update and good luck in your investment future.